Mother's Day is around the corner, and for some women, this is not a holiday that you look forward to due to the unhealthy relationship that you have with your mother. Trust me, I get it. I suffered silently for years because as a child growing up, my mother was emotionally unavailable and that pain followed me all the way to my adulthood. And this is one of the very reasons that I had to create the Motherless Child Guidebook, a sacred space for healing your mother wounds, to really support myself in my healing journey and be a resource for women all over the world so that they too could start to heal. Inside of the digital guidebook, you're going to find topics that's going to cover how to identify the toxic patterns in the relationship that you have with your mother, how to identify your mother wounds and heal from your past, what does it look like to reparent your inner child, and then lastly, how do you create a new narrative, a new story for yourself that feels good when you share it with others? Now, also within the guidebook, you're going to have soul writing prompts, so that way you can get your feelings out of your heart and out of your mind and down on paper. You're also going to have five videos that are going to complement each section, and it's going to be like I'm holding your hand and giving you a warm hug after you complete each section. I mean, what's better than having a friend go along with you, right? And then you're also going to get additional resources such as a playlist of music to help you and encourage you healing, affirmations, a book list, and so much more. Go to themotherlesschild.com and invest in your healing today. Hey, hey, welcome back to another episode of the Girl Be Free podcast. I'm your host, Siobhan, where I'm going to inspire and motivate you to show up for yourself. So this week, I am loving the Instagram feed, Mantra Magazine. Y'all, I just love reading their quotes every day, and 99% of the time, They resonate and speak right to me where I just have to share them in my IG stories. So if you're not following Mantra Magazine, definitely check them out. Also, they have a magazine, a physical, tangible magazine that you can purchase. And I've actually seen it at Barnes & Noble. All right, so on to today's episode. This may be the most realest, most open, transparent episode that I've ever done. And as I was writing down the notes on what I wanted to share, I have pages upon pages. But I'm talking today, speaking specifically to any woman who feels or who have felt like a motherless child. And I'm sharing, I'm sharing my story, not just to put it out there, but to help someone else that may feel like they're all alone or nobody understands and no one can relate. And for me, when I share, it's helping me grow, it's helping me heal, but it's helping me make space for others. So again, you don't feel like you have to do life alone, that there is support, there is community, and there are people in the world that get it. So what I noticed this past Mother's Day is that there was a theme where there were many more posts than normal, in my opinion, where people were acknowledging mothers or women who didn't necessarily have a happy Mother's Day, like Mother's Day wasn't a happy time for them. And I just kept seeing more posts than normal. And I'm like, wow, this feels really good that there are people acknowledging that everyone's relationship with their mother is not this oh so happy time or every everyone doesn't necessarily have the same experience or emotional feeling around mother's day like others and so i saw this one post it was actually posted on mantra magazine's feed so the post says thinking of you and there's six different bouquets of flowers. And so one says mothers who lost, who have lost children, those who have lost mothers, those with strained mother relationships, mothers with strained child relationships, those who have chosen not to be mothers, those yearning to be mothers. And when I saw that, I just had to share it because I'm like, yes, there's so many and women who can relate to these different types of emotional feelings around Mother's Day. And so as I was reading these posts, I said, you know what? I have something to say. I have something to share. And I want to put it in a 
podcast form because it's easier for me to communicate it sometimes. And so I will just say, and I've shared it a few times, several times on the podcast, I have a strained relationship with my mother. And this past Mother's Day, I was definitely triggered. And the reason that I was triggered is because I was in the same space with her. And I've been in the same space with her a few times over the last several months. But Mother's Day reminds me of what I don't have. So yes, I'm extremely grateful for my children and to be a mother. I love that I get to experience motherhood. However, there's this other part of me that yearns for something that I may never have. And that hurts. And so I get reminded of that particular emotional feeling every Mother's Day. And I didn't realize that I had I had an issue with it until several years ago. I didn't connect the dots, let me say. Um, I was at a brunch with my mother-in-law and my sister-in-law. And we go to this brunch every year. It's hosted by my mother-in-law's church. And a few years ago, we were sitting at the table and I started getting a migraine. This happened, this brunch was right before, it was a Saturday before Mother's Day. And I noticed my vision started getting blurry. I started getting a pounding headache, all of that jazz. Thankfully, I had pills in my purse that I was able to take. And so the headache or migraine, I should say, eventually subsided. But I had it the whole time that I was there. And when I went to my therapist, I believe the following week or so, I said, you know, this is what happened. And she said, your migraines are tied to your mother wounds. And I've shared on the podcast before that I've suffered from migraines for since I was 19 years old. And it hasn't, I haven't had one in a very long time that has brought me so much pain. And so when I had that migraine and then I talked to my therapist about therapist about it, it made me realize that, oh, there's an emotional feeling that is tied around this day that I need to process and work through. Thank God this past Mother's Day, I did not get a migraine. However, I was triggered in other areas. My childhood, and I've shared this before, was dysfunctional. And I didn't realize that I was growing up with a mother who had a mental illness. For me, it was normal how she behaved, the things that she did. I didn't think that they were normal, but it was my normal, if that makes sense. And I did not realize or learn that she had a mental illness until a few years ago. So just imagine growing up, seeing all kinds of stuff and experiencing so many different things and not knowing that this was odd or that this was weird or shouldn't have been happening. And so dysfunction became my norm. Even other people in my life, like they knew it, but I didn't know it because I guess I'm the daughter and it's what I've always known. And so in my teenage years, I made a choice that was influenced or encouraged by my mother, but I made a choice to go live with my grandmother. Honestly, it was the best choice that I could have ever made because otherwise my life would look very different today. And after moving in with my grandmother, I never dealt with the pain or the hurt that came from that relationship. So I continued on just being, right? Trying to be positive, trying to look at the brighter side of things, graduating high school, graduating college, going on to get my master's degree, get you know, getting married, buying a house, having the kids, only learning that none of that stuff heals the pain that I have in my heart. And for me, there's always this yearning or this desire to have that ideal relationship with the mother where I can pick up the phone and say, hey, I'm experiencing this with my daughter. How was I when I was this age? Or would you like to go out to lunch or anything that you can imagine you would pick up the phone and call your mother for? I can't do that. I remember when I was growing up watching how my friends, you know, they all have very close relationships with their mother. And in the deepest of my heart, I wanted that too. And I had to accept maybe a year or so ago, maybe a little bit longer in therapy, that what I was, what I was desiring was something that I would probably never have. And I had to learn to accept that. However, it still doesn't take the pain away, right? With me suffering from migraines and a lot of emotional feelings, what I recently learned is that 
I have to heal the inner child in me. And I notice that the inner child in me is showing up more frequently than ever. And I know it's only because I am doing this inner work. And the inner work is not easy. The more triggers that I have or the more of these situations that I'm in, I have to work through and process through them. So I was scrolling on Instagram and I came across this post and it said 10 things to say to your inner child. And the handle, the person who posted this is The Holistic Psychologist. I'll make sure that I link to her in the show notes as well. But 10 things to say to your inner child. You are enough. I see you. You are worthy and can create your life experience. I understand. You live in a new reality now. It wasn't your fault. I forgive you. You are a resilient warrior. I am here to guide you. The present moment is safe. And when I saw that, I'm like, yes, I I love those, let's just say affirmations, if you will, or statements, because it gives you the wording, if, especially if you don't know what to say. It gives you the wording to say to your inner child that you are loved, you are safe, you are secure. I am here for you, like all of that. So if you don't have a healthy relationship or if you have a toxic relationship or a strained relationship with your mom, number one, I just want to say that it's okay. Don't burden yourself about what you don't have, but start doing the inner work to begin to heal, right? Um, For so many years, I struggled desiring and wanting something that wasn't necessarily the best for me. So if you don't have a healthy relationship or if your relationship with your mom is toxic or the relationship is strained, please know that that's okay. Um, And don't burden yourself about what you have no control over. Um, And then also know that you're not alone. Um, I noticed the more that I share, the more that I post, I even did a a little survey type of deal on IG stories asking people to say, to click if they had a healthy relationship with their mother or a strained relationship with their mother. And there was a huge percentage of women who have a strained relationship. And then I started getting DMs from women saying, because I said I was going to do this podcast on the motherless child, I started getting DMs like, oh my goodness, I can't wait for that or I need to hear that. And I'm like, wow, so they're is something here. I don't know what this is to become. I just know I want to have a conversation and make space for women who may feel, they may feel alone because they don't have this relationship that they desire with their mother. And I'm going to give a lot of tips and all that jazz. So just kind of flow and stay with me. So I do want you to take time to acknowledge how you feel your pain, your grief, your hurt, like all of that matters. And don't ignore how you feel. I did that for a very long time and tried to wear this invisible mask, pretending that I was okay when I really wasn't. Um, Moving forward in life when I was broken internally in my spirit, because it's not easy to even say to someone, you know, my relationship with my mother is not the best, especially when you have children and they start asking questions, it just makes it more difficult. And so whatever pain you're experiencing, whatever hurt, whatever emotional feeling, whatever that is, it is okay for you to feel it. And nobody, not anybody can tell you how you should feel because they're not in your shoes and they don't know how you're experiencing things. And that's one thing that bothers me is when people try to tell me like, well, you should be okay or you should be over by now. You can't tell me what I should be over. The way that we were created, like there's a mother and there's a father. And if you have that lack, there's going to be something behind it. And to tell me just depending on how other people move through life and maybe they have a strained relationship with their mother or father, and they have been able to get over things, everyone doesn't move the same. And I don't want to just ignore my feelings. I want to heal. So then that way I can be in the most healthy, 
mental, emotional space possible to be a good mother, to be a good person, to be a good wife, to be a good business owner, like all of that. And I cannot ignore my pain anymore. And I can't be silent about it either because for a long time I was very silent and very carrying so much shame and guilt off of based on something that I didn't do, but that was done to me. And so please know that your pain, your hurt, any emotional feeling like grief, it's not just going to disappear. And avoidance will create anger and resentment. So you have to figure out a way to heal from all of that. I went to therapy, was in therapy for four months. Hands down, best decision I could have ever made for myself. I have since been back to therapy multiple times and will go again. And I think having someone who can help you process your emotions and be objective to help you work through whatever you're feeling is, oh my goodness, is so essential. I don't think like friends and, you know, spouses is the best for that because sometimes they could be biased or they, they can't really understand. So working with someone who has had conversations and uh, worked with other people in a similar space, I think that that is best, just in my opinion. Another thing that I want you to think about is to create healthy ways to express your true feelings. So again, therapy for one journaling and being vulnerable and really transparent in your journal. Like don't hold back. If you're angry, if you're pissed off, like write how you feel. Do not keep that stuff bottled up inside. Also, if you do have a safe space with people in your life that you can have conversations with that will encourage you and support you, I definitely suggest you do that as well. But you have to release those feelings. So then that way you can be in a position to grow. If you don't create healthy ways to express yourself, you could end up on the negative side of that. So being involved in toxic relationships, drugs, alcohol, addictions, things like that. So you definitely want to make sure that you are creating healthy ways that you can express yourself. So you're not going to the other extreme. Forgiveness is essential. And it's not that you're ever going to forget what happened, but you will be able to move through life with your heart a little bit softer. I forgave my mother several years ago and I forgave her for what she did. However, what I recently realized is that the inner child still has to forgive her. So when the younger part of me gets triggered, that part of me is still yearning for my mother. The adult me understands the situation, but the child in me is still yearning for that. And she's still holding on to that pain that happened to her. And so I have to not just forgive my mother on the surface level, but I have to forgive her deep in my heart and not just me as the adult me, but the inner child, you know, and just releasing that. And I will say, I'm not all the way there yet. There's still work that I have to do. And the forgiveness is not about the other person, but the forgiveness is for you so that you can grow, so that you can have peace, so that you can heal. And it's not an overnight thing. You know, it takes time to be able to really, truly forgive someone. I mean, maybe some people can do it really quickly. Maybe it may take you a a longer period of time. No judgment. I'm not saying what you should or shouldn't do, but allow yourself space to really process what's going on internally. And then yes, forgiveness is essential so that you can move forward in your life. And another thing too, is that you have to forgive your mother for what you feel she didn't give to you, what you feel like you needed or what you deserved. And for me, I needed affection. I needed love. I needed attention. I needed words of affirmation and I didn't get that. And so I have to forgive my mother for not pouring into me that way and really make sure that I'm intentional, which I I feel like I am with my children and more so affirming myself. So that's probably why I talk about affirmation so much and speaking life over yourself is because I didn't receive that. And I have to be that person for myself to make sure that I am in a good, healthy, and emotional headspace. 
So being motherless is not just an absent mother, right? I read an article on psychology today and it says eight toxic patterns in mother-daughter relationships. So I'm going to list all eight. Then you can kind of identify which one relates to you. And let me just pause and say, maybe you have a beautiful, healthy relationship with your mother and that is amazing. I salute you. However, maybe you know someone that doesn't. Please take a moment and share this podcast with them so then they can hear it and hopefully something that I share can be comforting to them. So again, I'm reading eight toxic patterns in a mother-daughter relationship. I pulled this article off of Psychology Today. I'll link it in the show notes so you can take a look at it. Number one is dismissive. Daughters raised by dismissive dismissive mothers doubt the validity of their own emotional needs. They feel unworthy of attention and experience deep, gut-wrenching self-doubt, all the while feeling intense longing for love and validation. Dismissive behavior, as reported by daughters, occurs across a spectrum and can become combative if the mother actively and aggressively turns dismissal into rejection. Number two could be controlling. So these mothers micromanage their daughters, actively refuse to acknowledge the validity of their words or choices, and instill a sense of insecurity and helplessness in their offspring. The daughter may feel inadequate, cannot be trusted to exercise good judgment, and would simply flounder and fail without her mother's guidance. Number three is emotionally unavailable, and this is what I experienced in the relationship that I have with my mother. Emotionally unavailable mothers, those who actively withdraw at a daughter's approach or who withhold love from one child while granting it to another, inflict a different kind of damage. Emotionally unavailable mothers can be disconnected from their daughters, and these behaviors can include a lack of physical touch, which is no hugging, no comforting, unresponsiveness to a child's cries or displays of emotion and her articulated needs as she gets older and of course literal abandonment. Literal abandonment leaves its own special scars especially in a culture which believes in the automatic nature of mother love and instinctual behavior. Number four is enmeshed. These mothers do not acknowledge any kind of boundary between them their definition of self, and their children. In this case, the daughter's needs for love and attention facilitates a maternal chokehold, exploiting human nature in the service of another goal. These women are classic stage mothers and live through their children's achievements. In mesh daughters, sense of self is swallowed whole. Number five is combative. These mothers never acknowledge their behaviors and they are usually quite careful about displaying them in public. Included in this group are mothers who are hypercritical, intensely jealous, or competitive with their offspring. Yes, this is mean mother territory. The mother takes advantage of the power play. The combative mother uses verbal and emotional abuse to win, but can resort to physical force as well. She rationalizes her behaviors as being necessary because of defects in her daughter's character or behavior. Number six is unreliable. This in many ways the hardest behavior for a daughter to cope with because she never knows if the good mommy or the bad mommy will show up. These daughters understand emotional connection to be fraught, precarious, and even dangerous. The mother can be emotionally unreliable, horribly critical, And then the next day she can be smiling and fussing. So it's like this, so it's kind of like a split personality. Number seven, self-involved. Call her a narcissist if you wish. This mother sees her daughter, if she sees her at all, as an extension of herself and nothing more. Unlike the enmeshed mother who is intently and smotheringly focused on her child, this mother carefully controls her involvement as it suits her own self-reflection. She's incapable of empathy, instead very concerned with appearances and the opinions of others. Her emotional connection to her daughter is superficial. 
although she would fiercely deny that if you ask because her focus is on herself. The tactics she uses to manipulate and control her daughter permit her to self-aggrandize and feel good about herself. Number eight, roles reversed. So daughters of alcoholic mothers or those who suffer from untreated depression may also find themselves in the caretaker role regardless of their age. That may include mothering not just their mothers, but their siblings as well. There are fragile mothers who also interact in this way, claiming health or other issues. Ironically, these mothers may love their daughters, but lack the capacity to act on their feelings. While these behaviors are hurtful, with therapy or intervention, many daughters can report reconciliation in adulthood as well as understanding. So again, I'm going to link to that article in the show notes so that way you can take a look at it and kind of read a little bit more. I just wanted to kind of break down the different patterns that happen in mother-daughter relationships that may be toxic. And then you can kind of see if any of them make sense for you. Or again, if you know someone who can benefit from this podcast, definitely be sure to share this with them. One thing that I've come to realize and understand is that my mother is a whole human being and I am just a part of her life. I am not her whole life. And so she has a whole life outside of me. Also her upbringing, so how she was raised, all of that impacts how she mothers or lack thereof. And I'm learning to accept that, you know, she did the best with what she knew how, and even understanding like, you know, her having a mental illness, thinking about all of the things that she experienced. So she had me at 19 years old, and I can't even imagine being in that space of having a child as a teenager. And then I don't know what the relationship was with my father and her. You know, I don't understand. I don't know. Right. And so she was, you know, she was a single mom and she did the best that she could. And she's a whole human being with a whole life. And so showing her compassion has softened my heart. I was just added to her life. Like I'm not her whole entire life. Understanding just like I am flawed, she is flawed as well. She has her own struggles, her own life experiences that have nothing to do with me. And so I'm learning to just accept it all without judgment. Again, it's a lot of work. That's why I'm doing this whole podcast on this topic because. I'm still learning and growing and I would love when, you know, I listen to this episode a year from now and can go back and say, wow, okay, this is where you were and this is where you're at now. And who knows what will happen, you know, in the future. So something that I want you to be mindful of too, is that your mother is not perfect by any means. I don't think intentionally that mothers are out to hurt their children. I think something happened in their life, their experiences that made them who they are. And that is how they showed up in this new generation, this new time. There's so much talk about therapy and mental wellness and self-care and self-love and just so much positivity around that. And if our mothers never got therapy for some of the pain and hurt that they carried, how were they expected to function? Right. So that's just something that I think about. And then also, like I mentioned before, like they're flawed as well. And so try to find some sense of peace and some sense of comfort as you move through life where you don't carry this burden from the relationship with your mother, that you're able to understand where she was or where she's at. And how do you grow from there? And maybe one day you can have a healthier relationship with her. And because you're doing the inner work and healing, you'll be better prepared for it. So a couple of points that I want to share with you as it relates to, you know, if you ever feel like you're a motherless child is I want you to work on healing the inner child. And I know there's therapy around that. So I highly recommend reaching out to a therapist. Um, I'm not working with a therapist about the inner child work right now. Um, I'm reading affirmations. I'm speaking to her. I'm journaling more. Um, A friend of mine gave me this really great suggestion the other day, and I'm going to use it. She said, well, think back when you were a child, 
What did you really enjoy doing? What brought you joy? What made you happy? And I remember when I was a teenager, I've always loved to color, but I also loved reading magazines. Like I was subscribed to Seventeen magazine at the time, and I was always so excited getting those magazines in the mail. And so that's something that I'm going to do, like going to Barnes and Nobles and like or the library and checking out magazines. Also, I love music and I I share that probably all the time on here, but I really love music. And so that's something that's incorporated in my day to day. Um, And then my friend said, also think about the snacks that you loved when you were a kid. And, you know, so really pouring into and loving on that inner child and going back and thinking about, well, what were some of the things that you enjoyed doing when you were a child that will bring you joy today? Um, I think that that's a really good idea. And also keep in mind that your inner child is the one who has experienced the pain. So obviously you're an adult now, but the inner child in you is the one that experienced the pain and she needs to heal. And if you never heal and do the inner work, it's going to be hard to move through life um, emotionally and, you know, emotionally healthy. It's going to be hard to get to the space that I'm encouraging all the Girl Be Free listeners is to be free and live your best life. And you can't live your best life if you're carrying pain and hurt year after year after year. Um, Number two is to let go of expectations. My expectation for my mother is really low. (laughs) It's really low. So much so that I feel like if we never have anything, I'm okay with that. Um, If she ever does anything, great. If not, that's fine as well. But my expectations are really low. And so I recommend that for you as well, because when you have your expectation, when you have high expectations for a person and they end up not meeting them, you put your hope into that person. And when they don't meet that expectation, you end up hurt, right? And so my recommendation is that you reduce your expectations for people, specifically since we're talking about mothers, So that way you don't keep going through the pain over and over again. Number three, allow the relationship with your mother to be whatever it is naturally. If you don't have a great relationship with your mother and you can't even fathom you guys being in the same room, it's okay to set a boundary. If it's better with distance, that is totally fine. If it's better to be together, that's fine as well. Don't force it. Don't make it be something that it cannot be. Let it happen naturally. And you'll know in your heart of hearts what it should be. Number four, and this is for me. (laughs) Um, I mean, all of this, this whole episode is for me, but number four is to release the shame and guilt from the lack of the relationship. So I've carried so much shame with my mother and the guilt because I always felt like I did something for her not to love me in the way that I needed to be loved. And when I see other women with their mothers, I'm like, well, why don't I have that? You know? And I did nothing wrong in this relationship with my mother. I understand that. And so there's nothing Thing that I need to be carrying, or there's no shame or embarrassment I need to be carrying because I did nothing wrong. Releasing that shame and guilt is what I'm learning how to do now. And the more and more that I talk about it freely, it's helping me. And then again, I'm attracting other women who can relate. So then that way I can share my story and my journey without tears strolling down my face. And I can be able to help them and say, you know what? You did nothing wrong. You were the child. You didn't deserve that. And now this is how we need to heal going forward. Number five is, I want to mention again, to set boundaries. And that's setting boundaries with your mother, but also other people who may be connected to the situation or the relationship in some way, shape, or form. Don't allow people to bully you and tell you how you should feel, how you should behave, how you should act, because that's not their right. That's not their place to do that. I never recommend anyone be disrespectful or anything like that, but you have a right to feel however you feel and don't be bullied into, don't allow others to bully you into feeling a certain kind of way. Express how you feel with your mother, with love, with calm, with peace and respect. And when you do your part, at the end of the day, that's all you can do. 
Number six, your mental and emotional health is priority. No exceptions. So therapy, journaling, whatever you need to do to get emotionally and mentally healed is very, very important. I will say as I wrap this episode up, because I know it's a little bit longer today, this is your journey. You know, it's no one else's journey but yours. And what I've realized, I'm going to be triggered in different ways. And this is why my healing work will continue. The beauty in this story is that I know everything that happened to me, it had to happen for me to be right here. And that I am in a position because I'm doing this work that I can help somebody else. I want to hear from you. I want to know if you can relate. You can send me an email at hello at BeFreeProject.com. That's always in the show notes. You can leave a comment on this episode by clicking the link in the show notes. You can come over to my IG page at BeFreeProject and shoot me a DM or leave a comment on one of my episodes, or excuse me, on one of my posts. I want to hear from you. Please, 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 I beg you, if anything that I shared in this episode has resonated or you can relate to, I want to hear from you because I feel like there's an opportunity to make space for women who may have some of the challenges and everybody don't understand. The only people that can get it is if they too have been through what you've been through. And so if you can relate, you know someone that can relate, share this episode, but I definitely want to hear from you. What I would love, love, love is if you took a moment to share this episode on your social media feeds, because maybe you don't necessarily know who has a strained relationship with their mother and they feel like a motherless child. And when they see this podcast, they can feel like, oh, that is for me. So I would love if you share this episode on your IG feed, on your stories, on Facebook, Twitter, just tag me at Be Free Project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of your journey. Thank you for listening to this episode. This in itself was so healing for me. And I just want to express gratitude that you took a moment to listen, to hear my heart, and then know that this is why I'm so passionate. I'm so passionate about empowering women to get unstuck and to be free. And it's simply because I know what stuck feels like. I know what that feels like. And now I know what it feels like to be free of the pain and the hurt that I've carried for so many years. And as you see, I've cultivated a whole business be free project around it simply to cultivate community where women can begin to shift their mindset, get clear about what they want so that they can show up and take action and do the work. And that's what I'm here for. So Thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, girl, be free.